Hi, I'm Mike Sintolo, Chief Analyst of Cabot Growth Investor and Cabot Top 10 Trader, and I'm here with your Cabot Weekly Review. I am recording this late Friday morning, as usual, on June 10th. Um, so the last couple of weeks, the market's been kind of in one of these close but no cigar modes. Like we saw the intermediate term trend of the major indexes and growth funds kind of turn neutral, but not really turn positive. We've seen the number of new lows, uh, or we saw the number of new lows dry up pretty nicely, you know, much tamer than they have been for almost all of this year but not quite down to levels that would signify the sellers have you know, really left the building. We saw some stocks not just perk up, but kind of maybe uh, lift above some low level resistance, but not really get going from there. You know, They held their gains, but not really getting going and running into some other resistance. And then of course, starting yesterday on Thursday and continuing this morning so far on the inflation report, the market's kind of coming off again. So you know, what does it all mean? All it really means to me is nothing's changed. We're still defensive, the trends are still down. We haven't we didn't get enough strength there for an additional, you know, some green lights to put money to work. I would really try to ignore the noise. I mean, as soon as the market sells off big for a day, which it did. Don't get me wrong. Um, you know, if you turn on Twitter, it's all the bears are out. Oh, I told you so. The Fed's going to raise rates, the inflation report and all this. Well, yeah, maybe we're going to have another leg down here or maybe this is part of a bottom building process or maybe we stop going down as soon as I stop recording this video and we go up from here. You know, I'm not predicting anything. I'm just saying that, you know, try to filter out the noise. When the market topped out seven months ago, all the news was good. I'm not saying we're bottoming out here, but seven months later, hey, the market can't even have a chance of going up because the Fed's raising rates and all that. We'll see how it goes. But the bottom line is we just need to see more. It's the same position we've been in for weeks. In Cabot Growth Investors Model Portfolio, we're still north of 80% cash. I'm ready to buy. I got my game plan ready, you know, probably two or three half positions to start, build from there. I mean, that's really what I'm focusing on is just individual stocks. But you just kind of wait for the green light to show up. You don't want to keep, you know, running through red lights. Eventually you get smacked. So we're just remaining patient here, building the watch list. And eventually when this turns, you know, there'll be a good run. But so far, now is not the time. Okay, let's hop into the charts. As usual, I'm using MarketSmith. It's a program uh, product from Investors Business Daily. You can learn more at marketsmith.com. Get out my line pen. You can kind of see here, the, NAS the NASDAQ was actually one of the weaker indexes. So we've had this decline. Obviously, we had this, this thing here. We had this little quick double bottom. I wouldn't say that double bottom like a retest, but a quick little retest in May. And then we had that pre-Memorial Day rally. And the 25-day line started to flatten out. You'll see it more on some of the other indexes. But it, we, we really need to see it turn up and not just sort of nose up technically. It's not a computer program. You know, when we did this back, it, not to go on a tangent, but when me and uh, Carlton Lutz, who was the founder of Cabot, kind of put this together in the um, early 2000s, you know, we were printing out pages of indexes and looking at the 25 and 50 day line. So it wasn't like a computer program that says, oh, it started to trend up right here. You want to see it get a little bit of momentum, you know, behind it. And obviously that didn't happen here. And now we're falling back on. Uh, back down. Now, whether this, you know, just leads to some implosion, uh, it's possible. Um, maybe we find some support. Maybe this is part of a bottom building phase. Let everyone else kind of guess at that. I think right now it's just playing it by the book just means is it a red light or a green light? Right now it's still a red light. Okay. Um, S&P 500, just to run through some of the charts. Um, this was a little bit a little bit closer. You can see how the 25 day line flattened out a little bit before we kind of cascaded lower. And you can even see it more. Technically, some of these kind of almost turned positive. So here's the IWM, you know, flattened out here before the sell off and so on and so forth. So we'll see how it goes. But right now, obviously, um, I will say not to get in the weeds, but we are dropping off these days were 25 days ago. So if the market could hold here, if and come in next week and really put on a good rally, it could actually turn the intermediate term trend positive. That doesn't mean, you know, everything's positive and you go fully invested or anything like that. But just keep your mind open to it. Honestly, two or three good days from here uh, could turn things positive. Not saying that's going to happen, but it's just uh, good to keep your mind to it. Um, New York Composite, same sort of thing. You can see it's getting nailed here on this gap. OK, the, the inflation nude is just very obvious to me, so I'm not predicting anything. I just think, again, the time to really get defensive was, you, you know, I'm not saying if you're not defensive, you should you should just stay heavily invested. But the time to initially really get worried was when we started having these sell offs and everything got got nailed in the market with the Nasdaq down 30 percent. Now it seems like everyone's like super bearish. So we'll see how it plays out. I've, I've seen this play out before. Eventually it's going to end. We'll have a good a good rally. Um, growth fund, same sort of thing. You can see it kind of started to flatten out here, it's still trending down. And now they're selling off again. Yeah, you know, I won't go through the whole list here, but this is the IPO fund. The prior one was QQQJ. So, you know, if we can just find support 
and get some rally here. A good week next week, say, on the upside for whatever reason, that would be good. But have to see it to believe it. Um, just running through some other things here. So I, got, I actually have a lot of charts to show you. So this is the chip sector. The chip sector was actually showing a little relative strength. You can see um, the this is this blue line is the relative performance line to the S&P 500. It actually bottomed way back in April. You know, not a huge divergence, but just something I noted. It actually got above the 50-day line, unlike the most major indexes. But again, now it's just coming back off. So let's just see how some of these things act as they test the lows, you know, do they shake out and snap back or do they just kind of melt down? Um, we'll see how it plays out. Um, transport stocks, obviously this is sort of a recession trade, right? If the economy is gonna go into recession, transport stocks are gonna be sick. Um, you know, the major breakdown here was uh, at the end of the March rally, really got crushed. And again, retesting the low. Um, and then of course, I like to keep an eye on XLP, um, which is, you know, holding up today a little bit. But honestly, if you look at a chart, I can't show it to you on MarketSmith, but the NASDAQ versus the XLP, it's actually been perking up here. Obviously, today it's going to take a hit, uh, but it's been perking up here for three, four weeks. So we'll see how it plays out. It's, it, that was another one indicator. We have something called the aggression index, which is just the NASDAQ versus consumer staples. And it was one of those where it's shown improvement, looked better than it had in a few months, but wasn't quite you know enough to really trigger any sort of signal. So something to watch here, but nothing definitive as of yet. The other thing I just wanted to mention, and generally speaking, commodity stock, energy stocks look good, but... I am seeing more, you know, after big prolonged runs, not just this year, but last year, I'm just seeing more pockets of sort of the commodity complex. I don't want to say they're long-term tops, but they do look ragged. This is Nutrien. It was on our watch list and obviously a pullback after this moonshot was expected. And I can't say it's abnormal or anything long-term, but you can just see, you know, it got hit here, tried to bow, you know, a couple lower lows here. Now we're working on, I don't know, six, seven, eight weeks down, see on the weekly chart, you know, overall, you're not going to look at this pullback and say it's changed, but just a lot of weeks down, selling off this week, despite saying they're going to buy back a ton of stock this year. So fertilizers look, I wouldn't say they look terrible, but they look a little ragged. This is CF Industries. Then you have like steel stocks. This is Nucor, which looked pretty good for a while, but now that's 36% off its high, you know, steel dynamics, uh, STLD is 25% down. Again, you're not looking at this saying, um, you know, it's not the all-time top in commodities or anything, but they are looking more and more ragged. You know, Freeport Mac Moran, this is obviously copper. Uh, it has bounced a little bit, but really hasn't done anything for a while, and it's still 24% off its recent high. And then this week you had things like uh, Star Bulk, which I've mentioned on here. Um, you know, it's down 18% this week on big volume. Could it come back? Sure, these things are volatile, but you're starting to see more of these... Um, Let's see, Eagle Shipping, EGLE. This looks a little bit better, quote unquote, but not great. You can just see, you know, just very sharp breaks in here. So I'm just seeing more of the commodity things get hit. And of course, these are coming after big runs where the news is all good and everybody, it seems like anybody that's been trading this market lately is mostly trading commodity stocks or something, you know, cyclical stocks anyway, just because growth has been so sick. So just something to keep an eye on. Now, with all that said, I do still see number one oil prices and stuff look good, but I still see a lot of great looking charts in oil and gas names. And honestly, pullbacks could be viable. So this is PDC Energy. Um, I'm seeing some more uh, secondary names pick up. PDC, I wouldn't say a secondary, but you know, it's an 8 billion market cap. It's not like it's uh, Devon Energy or, or EOG Resources. It's kind of on the smaller side. Um, but a nice sort of breakout and sort of a, not a thrust, but, you know, a bunch of days up in a row. You can just see a lot of big volume buying. My guess is pullbacks will probably be supported there. Um, Antero Resources looks great. There's really, I don't think there's that much to do with it here, but uh, you had your initial run, kind of your flag, and now you're running again. Here's a pullback. Um, you know, we'll see how it handles itself, but so far looks pretty normal on the pullback side. EQT is another natural gas play. Um, not quite as strong as... Uh, AR, but again, kind of hit new highs and just just as chilling out here the last few days. I mean, it's volatile. It can move around a few percent. Don't get me wrong, but looks fine. Um, I keep looking over here because my notes are behind the computer. This is Cotera Energy. This is the old Cabot, not no relation to us. Cabot Oil and Gas and Simerex. So it's kind of got oil and gas exposure, and just you know, just you can just see uh, pullbacks are all supported, and yeah, it's pulling back again here, but looks pretty normal. A little bit of selling volume, so we'll see how it goes. Um, and then even some of the coal, you know, honestly, the coal, there's been a couple of days this week where I'm like, oh, maybe coal is joining some of those commodity areas that are that are sagging. 
Uh, but this is Arch Coal ARCH. It's kind of, it's sloppy, but it's kind of got this. It's easier to see on the weekly chart actually. Um, it's kind of got well, it's still sloppy on the weekly chart too. <laughs> but it's it's got this sort of base on base thing, still respecting the 10 week line. Um, CEIX, this is I think it's console. Yeah, it's just been kind of trending higher. Um, now they are coming in a little bit, so let's see what happens if they join. But just something to keep an eye on. I think it's you know oil prices are high, gas prices are high, shipping rates are high. You know, steel prices are high, coal prices are high. It's very obvious the war, obviously, overseas. Um, inflation numbers are huge, so it, you know it wouldn't surprise me if some of these might be getting a little bit ripe. But we'll we'll see how it goes. So far, energy still looks good, but some of the other areas, not quite as much. Another area I told you I got a lot of charts to show you. Another thing I'm looking at, and I wrote about in this week's Wealth Advisory or Wealth Daily, I guess we call it, is just some of these bottoming. I'm not really interested, at least at this point, of buying any of these things that fell you know, 60% now they've bounced. I mean, big picture, this just looks like a pullback within a big downtrend, you know, way below the 200 day, day line. But this is Dynatrace DT. It's always had a good story, great numbers, growth and all that. But, you know, it's got crushed here in the in the bear phase for growth stocks. But my question is, how do some of these things hold up here, uh, especially if the market does kind of hit a new low here going forward? Obviously, it's coming in today, but light volume. And if you start to see more names that did sort of thrust higher, just kind of hold up and start to resist. That's what you often see near lows. Um, it's just fewer stocks participating on the downside. You know, Salesforce, this is kind of an easy one to look at. Um, it's a little messy on this chart, but it had this big, this was a nice volume earnings gap, you know, biggest volume in, I don't know, a year, year and a half or something like that. Um, doesn't mean it's out of the woods at all, but I'm just using them as sort of a feedback mechanism. Um, big gap here. Uh, getting hit today, but you can see it's not even not even to the where it closed on the day of the gap. So still holding up pretty good. Zoom, uh, Zoom Energy, or not Zoom Energy, Zoom Communications, ZM, you know, the old huge pandemic winner. I mean, this is such a classic case where it topped, you know, way before the, the numbers did. And this this was a big topping process. And then the stock has gotten killed. But again, finally, kind of a line in the sand here couple of weeks ago and so far it's holding up pretty well you can see it's really just unchanged on the week while the indexes are getting hit pretty good so just kind of if you do see some of these things bottom out uh, and then gap uh, up you know just keep them on sort of a back burner watch list not even to buy or anything just as feedback because when you see these what we did see in March was like an upstart uh, which the stock is crazy but the stock went from you know 80 and then it doubled off its lows of course it was still buried um, but instead of sort of pulling back and hanging out up here, obviously the stock melted down and now it's down 90% from its highs. You know, you start seeing more of those and Salesforce and Dynatrace just give up the ghost in five days. That will probably tell you something. Whereas if you start to see some resist the decline, that'll tell you something different. In terms of names that look pretty good, obviously it's relatively thin pickings outside of uh, energy. But Ulta Beauty, I think I mentioned this last week. You did have some of these uh, retail names, not a lot, but some that got nailed with the Target Walmart news. And then immediately the next week, usually because of earnings, snap back. So Ulta is one of those. Um, it's not the young buck it once was, but you can see the nice gap on earnings. And it's just held here on the weekly chart really pretty tight. Um, you know, what you want to do with it is up to you. Go back to the daily. Um, it's still getting hit with the market, but you can see it's basically just kind of hanging out. Higher price stock, 400 to 430. So we'll see how that goes. Dollar Tree, another super exciting name, but actually there actually is a little story here um, in terms of growth and some higher prices, charging uh, sellers prices. Again, you get the it got killed on the uh, on the news, rebound on earnings the next few days later, and just very tight since then. So that's kind of a you just wonder if maybe all this is kind of called an island bottom. You kind of wonder if all the weak hands just got nailed out on that bad news. Um, so it's kind of kind of interesting. Uh, Shockwave, I'm still keeping a distant eye on. It still has work to do. And this move um, uh, a few days ago was on S&P 600 edition. It was some index edition, something like that. But I just sort of more am stepping back where it had this huge run, obviously, post-pandemic crash. And now it's had this huge, I don't know, 50 or 60 percent wide base it's been going on for seven or whatever months like the market and you have these huge volume clues this week's volume clue a little skewed probably because of the index edition um, but still it's kind of a decent looking pattern it has work to do but still something that i'm watching um, celsius i think looks pretty good celh getting hit this week um, but this is one of these names that um, held the lows got above a little bit of low level very low level resistance i guess um, 
and, and then was kind of holding its its move and really is still kind of holding the move. It really doesn't look bad at all, but uh, on the daily chart anyway. Um, but it just can't, you know, like everything else, it just can't punch out. It just can't get going and get ahead of steam going in this environment. But still something I'm watching, huge numbers. Uh, big base might need more time easily, but definitely something to keep your eye on. Um, Enphase and Solar Edge, these are the two uh, micro inverter companies. I won't say it all, but, you know, again, so a little bit of higher volume selling this week as it approached resistance. That's par for the course in this environment. This is Enphase, by the way, ENPH. Um, but overall, you, you know, again, the, the relative performance line bottom back here, you have this set of higher lows. You know, maybe it gets hit again and it forms another higher low up here sort of thing if, say, the market gets hit for a week or two. We'll see how it plays out. But overall, I still like the overall look of the structure. And the longer it can, if it can hold up here, the better. I like Enphase a little bit better than Solar Edge, but they're both kind of um, cousin stocks. This is SEDG based in Israel. Um, again, reversal this week, but kind of has this big, long structure to chew on. Um, uh, AMD, I, oops, sorry about that. AMD, I just wanted to mention, um, again, not really doing much, but kind of one of these chip stocks, it's just starting to etch some of these higher lows, maybe. So we'll see how it's, it's selling off a little bit today, um, but it's trying to, a few weeks into a possible bottoming process. Um, AutoNation, uh, this is a huge share buyback. It's one of these companies that, yeah, used to earn, you know, whatever, four or five bucks a share. Now they're earning 20 bucks a share. Part of that is high car prices. But they've been buying back like 30% of their company. I forget, ton of stock. And the stock has just basically been hanging in here. Um, so it could be kind of a unique, special situation. A um, couple more. Chemors company. This is chemicals. Um, the reason I mentioned this, oops, sorry, I skipped away from the weekly chart too soon. You know, you had this, obviously, the, 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 the comeback here. And then you have this big base. You had a nice breakout on earnings, I don't know, a few weeks ago. First of all, you did have some buying right off the bottom, too. Nice breakout in earnings week a month and a half ago, excuse me. And of course, it didn't, you know, it's not like it went vertical, but it, it went higher by, you know, whatever, a little bit here. And now it's pulling back. Now, so far, volume's been light. I'm not a huge fan when a stock goes from 45 to 40, but it's done nothing wrong. And this is sort of one of these sort of cyclical plays that could still be okay. If you want to take a swing at it, use a reasonable stop. That's up to you. I'm not going to give specific advice on the video, but that's a decent looking setup. And just one thing I wanted to put on people's radar is, let's see. This is FXI, China, which is, it's hard to be more hated than China is right now in the stock market. This, all the stocks have been blown up even before the bear market. But interestingly, the bottom here was in uh, March, mid-March. This is uh, FXI, is kind of the ETF for China. Um, kind of bottomed out here and actually, and it has been perking up here with the market. You know, it's actually flat today. Um, obviously on the weekly chart, you can see it's had this huge decline, but you know, let's see. These bottoms usually are processed, not an event. You know, everyone wants to get back in first, but now we have a couple months of bottom building, and you're starting to see in some of the bigger names. So this is NetEase, NTES. Um, this one's actually been holding up really well comparatively. But you have this. This this was that March low where the FXI bottomed. Um, it's huge volume support, uh, almost. Well, I guess there was one bigger week, but you know, one of the bigger weeks in, in recent history, and that's actually approaching its high, you know, Alibaba, this one's worse off. Um, but again, you have this huge volume support uh, for two weeks in a row back in March, this looks like a lot like the the FXI, and then big volume buying this week. Um, yeah, I'm not going out and buying any Chinese stocks right now. But at the same time, you know, when you have a, a group that's this unloved, that's had this decline, and if they can bottom out further, um, and who knows, maybe China starts throwing money at its economy all over the place. Um, you know, that could be something where uh, money does flow to in the future. But in the meantime, it's the same sort of story. I mean, one of these days I won't come in here and beat a dead horse. Um, but we've been through this before. We've been through a lot worse than this, 08, stuff like that. 08 was the year after I took over Growth Investor. So that was a challenge. But we came through there fine. And we're going to find our leaders coming out of this thing, too. Um, I would just, like I said, just to reiterate, just ignore the noise out there. Could this be another leg down? Yeah, it could be. But it also could be a bottoming process. It could be something where the indexes fall to new lows. But, you know, most stocks don't that we're watching. You know, let's just see how it plays out. Right now, it's more of a red light, green light thing. Um, and obviously, it's still a red light. So we would just remain, whether you're cautiously optimistic or cautiously pessimistic or cautiously depressed or whatever you are, we would just be cautious. That's really what counts at the end of the day is your portfolio positioning. We would be cautious. We'd be defensive and just continue to wait for the green light down the road. Okay, that's all the time I have for today. As always, thanks for listening and be sure to come by again next week for another Cabot Weekly Review.